Blomfield. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Honourable Member for Grantham and Stamford for bringing this debate and for the thoughtful and powerful way in which she opened it. Like him, um, I will share personal experience, although mine is not as positive. It is by a coincidence to the day, the eighth anniversary of uh, receiving, my receiving a phone call here in Westminster that my father had been found dead in his garage. The previous night, he tied up, tidied up his belongings. He'd left small piles of money to settle the bills with a huge agent and others. He'd written final notes, walked to the garage, connected a hose pipe from his car exhaust into the car, taken an overdose and switched on the engine. As you can see, I don't find this easy to talk about even after eight years. But I've done so before and I will do so today, not least because uh, I know that he would have wanted me to, yeah. as somebody who had always believed in a change of the law in assisted dying. And because I think his experience shows how the existing law not simply fails people, but leads to premature deaths. Now, I know that some of those oppo opposing a change argue, and I respect my honourable friend for doing so, that it could lead to people taking their lives sooner than they would otherwise uh, face as their end. But my experience, and I think the experience of many others, and I think the statistics mentioned opposite are understated, are that the existing law in itself encourages people to take their lives sooner than they would otherwise do. My father was 87 and he, at that age, had inevitably watched many of his friends go. Often miserably, he talked in particular of one who had become confined to bed, doubly incontinent, and having become both deaf and blind, unable to communicate with anybody. He saw no point in that kind of life. And he, he had always said that he would rather end things than face a degrading death. My father was somebody who had made the most of his life. He had a tough East End upbringing in poverty. He became an RAF pilot in the war. He built a successful business career. He had a share of health problems, but he faced them all positively. He wasn't afraid of pain, but he couldn't face the indignity of a lingering death. And I'm sure that he made up his mind to take his life soon after receiving a terminal diagnosis of inoperable lung cancer. But he still died prematurely. I'm sure that what drove him to end his life at that point was the fear that if he didn't act when he could and was still able to do so, then he would lose the opportunity to act at all. And he couldn't talk to me about it. He couldn't talk to his partner because he would have made us complicit. The current law, Madam Deputy Speaker, forced my father into a lonely decision and a lonely death. Now, I know there are some who will say that we simply need to improve end-of-life care. And it's hugely important that we should. My father supported our local hospice. I raised funds for it. It does a great job. But no hospice can enable everybody to die with the dignity that they would want. Indeed, for my father, it was soon after his appointment with a palliative care nurse where together they talked about his last months, that he took the decision to take his life. If the law had made it possible, he could have shared his plans with us. And knowing that he could, with support, go at the time of his choosing, would have enabled him to stay longer. If the law had made it possible, 
he would have been able to say goodbye and go with his family around him, not in a carbon monoxide filled garage. He and many others like him deserve better. We simply need to change the law. And I appreciate that there are those here whose personal beliefs, whose faith makes my father's choice unacceptable. And I respect those beliefs. Live your life by them, but don't impose them on others. Let people have the choice at the end of their lives. Allow them dignity in dying as we would want them to have in life. Yeah. 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 Crispin Blunt. Um, thank you for that.